everyone. Let me get the uh, the screen up. Whoops. Uh, there we go. Okay. Uh, boy, a uh, lot of technical issues uh, today. Um, so uh, today's lab. Today's lab is. Let me make sure everyone can see this. Yeah, it looks like you can. Okay, so today's lab is the last lab we have listed here. It's the optics lab, but I am gonna uh, write my own lab, and um, uh, that'll be our last lab. Uh, I'm trying to just find stuff that's online that's pertinent to what we're doing, and and it's you know has some good videos online. So it's been a bit of a search. Um, I'm trying to find something maybe on LR and LC circuits. Um, okay, but let's uh, start with uh, today's lab. So um, if you click on that, uh, here it is. And let me see how does that look? Yeah, it looks fine. So um, optics, uh, whoa, lost it again. Okay. Um, Optics, uh, there's there's quite a few uh, topics in this lab, but uh, we're really going to concentrate on uh, just a few of them because um, they're really simple uh, concepts and um, they're things that just don't have the same oomph unless you actually see them uh, in the lab. And um, um, so we're going to really look at uh, lenses. So even though this is optics, we're really just going to concentrate on lenses. Uh, all right, so... Um, I got to teach you about how lenses work. Okay, so if you remember um, when we did refraction, what happens when light meets an interface is that it'll refract. Okay, and that means that the light will actually bend at the um, uh, interface between air and water or air and, and glass. And so as you can see here, this is a lens. This is what's known as a convex lens. That's a lens which is thicker in the middle than it is at the endpoints. And as the rays come in here like that, so these rays are coming in parallel like that, when they meet the interface between the, um, the air and the glass, they'll bend, they'll refract, okay? And they actually refract again when they exit, but because of the shape of the lens, the overall effect is to uh, for the convex lens is to take all of the rays and bend them so that they pass through one point there like that okay so this is how a convex lens works and if these rays are coming in parallel like that they will all bend for what's called a thin lens or a simple lens they will all bend and they will all pass through one particular point like that and the distance from the middle of the lens there to the uh, focal point um, that is actually the known as the the focal length of that lens okay so um Let's take a look at other different uh, different shapes of lenses. Here's another shape to a lens. This one is known as a concave lens. And so a concave lens is actually thinner in the middle and thicker at the edges. And again, we're gonna pass these, uh, ignore the dashed lines for now. We're gonna pass in these parallel uh, rays of light here. And when they get to the interface between the glass, uh, air and the glass, they'll bend. But now because of the shape, they'll actually refract so that they're actually diverging away from one another. And so they don't converge and you won't find a focal point out here. Instead, what you have to do is you have to say, where, where does it look like these rays came from? And if you just project them back, it looks like they all came from a point behind the lens. And so this is also a focal point, okay? And I'll, I'll show you some ray tracing uh, in a minute. Um, I'll switch to another screen. I'll show you how to do the ray tracing. But uh, the, the divergent lens or the concave lens uh, makes the rays diverge away from a focal point, whereas the convex lens bends the rays such that they converge towards a focal point like that, okay? And this leads to some very different behavior as I'll, I'll show you in a minute, all right? So um, this also works for mirrors, although we're not gonna study mirrors, but might as well mention them at this point because um, after all, you know, this is the same phenomenon, even though we're not gonna look at mirrors, lenses are more uh, interesting. So here is a mirror and this is a concave mirror. Okay, and now, now what's not shown in this diagram because it would make it too messy is a bunch of parallel beams coming in here like that. Okay, and these parallel beams, they impinge on the mirror. And now because of the shape of the mirror, the mirror is going to reflect the rays such that they all pass through a focal point 
like that. Okay. And so for a concave mirror, you get the rays converging onto a focal point in front of the, uh, um, the, the mirror. And as you can imagine, you can do the same thing with a convex mirror like that. And so here's the shiny surface. Now here you do see the parallel rays coming in. So here's a parallel ray coming in. Here's another one coming in. And of course when they, and here's like, here's some more down here. Okay. And when they hit the mirror again, because of the shape of the mirror, they will bend away, they will reflect. Okay. Not refract this time, but reflect. And they will reflect away so that they're diverging. And it looks like they're all diverging from a point behind the lens here like that. And there's the focal point for this particular mirror. Okay. So um, uh, just to quickly summarize that, uh, there, now we have four optical devices. Um, the first is the convex lens. And the convex lens is also known as a converging lens. Okay. Because it makes the rays converge. Okay. You have a concave lens, which makes the waves uh, the rays diverge. Okay, uh, it could also be called a diverging lens or a concave lens. And then you have the mirror equivalents of them. And this is a concave mirror. And a concave mirror is a converging mirror. It makes the rays converge. Okay. And you have the um, uh, convex mirror, which makes the rays diverge. Okay. Now, uh, it's a little bit confusing, but the convex mirror, uh, lens, that's the lens which is thicker in the middle, or the converging lens, is actually more like a concave mirror. So the convex lens works like a concave mirror, and the con uh, yeah, convex lens is like a concave mirror, and the concave lens is like a convex mirror. I know it's a little bit confusing, but uh, that's the way it works, okay? So what we're going to do in this lab is we're actually going to uh, uh, study how these lenses work to take images, sorry, objects, and create images with them. All right. And there's really no, uh, Dr. DeHaven doesn't really do a ray diagram in here. I'll do that in a minute, but just let me show you this diagram uh, and uh, this formula before we switch over to another screen here. So um, the way we're going to uh, look at how lenses behave is we're going to use what's called an optics bench. Okay. And you'll see that in one of the videos. And basically the optics bench is just a, a place where you can mount objects and uh, uh, and screens and, and um, lenses, okay? And so um, on this optic bench, you can place an object here, okay? Uh, it could be anything. Uh, it could be even like a candle in uh, one of the... Uh, uh, videos. I think it's uh, no. I think I think it's actually uh, um, exactly like what we have in the lab. It's basically just a glowing screen, okay, with an arrow on it. So there's the object, and the object is going to, you know, emit all these rays, and these rays are going to go in all different directions. But some of the rays are going to impinge on the lens here, okay. And the rays that impinge on the lens, the one that comes in parallel, is going to pass through this focal point. And then it's going to go off like that. All right. Now I'll draw the ray diagrams in a minute, but there's a whole bunch of rays here. And what this lens will do here is it'll bend them and it'll cause them to converge and they won't converge at the focal point. The rays only converge at the focal point if they're coming in parallel, but if they're coming in at some angle here, like, you know, they're divert, you know, they're, they're traveling in all different directions from coming off the object. Okay. The, the, um, convex, lens will still cause them to converge, but they'll converge onto a screen here and you'll actually be able to see the image and the image will look just like the object, but there'll be a couple of things about it. First, it'll be upside down. Okay. So it's inverted. Second, it will be either bigger or smaller than the object. So it could be magnified or demagnified. Okay. And the other thing is it could be either real or virtual. And that's a little harder to understand. Real means that you have to actually put a mirror there to see the the rays converge. Oh, sorry, not a mirror, but a, a screen there. Without a screen, you won't see a real image. All right. Uh, the other one is the virtual image, and the virtual image it doesn't really the rays don't converge onto a screen. You have to actually look through the lens in order to see the virtual image behind it. Okay. So I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you the details of that in in just a second. But uh, let me just show you this formula here before I switch screens. And this formula here is known as the lens formula. And what does it say? It says one over the focal distance. That F there is the distance from the lens to the focal point. That's going to equal one over DI. And DI is the distance from the lens to the image here like that. And then one over DO, where DO is the distance from the object uh, to the lens there like that. And uh, this is just obtained by um, some similar triangles. Um, you know, in the lecture when 
my posts that uh, I'll give you some indication of how this comes about. But right now we could just take this formula as given. OK, and there's one other formula you'll need in this lab. And it's uh, this formula right here. And basically, if you take the uh, uh, size of the image, or sorry, the distance from the image to the uh, uh, lens, that's di, and you divide it by do, that's going to equal the magnification. OK, the negative sign just means that it's inverted. OK, so whenever you get a negative magnification, you're basically going to get an in inverted image. And again, this actually just comes out from um, from a, an analysis based on similar triangles. Let me see if there's any questions in the chat. OK, it doesn't seem like there's any. Let me switch screens and I'm going to show you how to do a ray diagram. OK, and so the ray diagram is going to explain basically what the relationship is between DO, uh, F and DI uh, in terms of the rays that are being emitted from the object. OK, so I'm switch, switching here to another screen and um, let's uh, let's draw our optical bench here like this. OK, so there's the optical bench. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the uh, the lens. But the, the lens, um, I'm going to just draw it this way. This is a symbolic way of drawing a convex lens. OK, it's, it looks like an arrow on the top and the bottom like that. All right. Um, I, it just makes it easier than to try to draw, you know, a lens which is thicker in the middle than, than um, uh, at the edges. All right. And uh, let's put a couple of focal points here. This is the focal point here and there's a focal point there. OK. And you say, why did I draw two focal points? Well, for rays that are coming from the left, they will pass through this focal point here and rays that are coming from the right, they'll pass through the other focal point. But this is really the only focal point we need. OK, now there's a couple of possibilities for where we're going to put the object. We can put the object further away from the lens than the focal point or we can put the object closer. OK, so for my first ray diagram, let me put the object right there. OK, and the object is just usually drawn like an arrow like that. All right. So let me see if you can see that. Yeah, OK, that looks all right. Uh, OK, and uh, let me draw the rays. Now, the rays, I'll do them in red. The rays on, on this object, like every point of this object is going to produce rays that are uh, emitted in every direction. And we don't want to draw all those rays because th that'll just make a mess. OK, so we're just going to draw the rays that are emitted from the tip of the object. OK, and wherever the tip of the object is here, there'll be an image here that will show you the tip and then you can infer where the rest of the image is. OK, so where are these rays going? Well, you know, one ray could be heading off like that. OK, so this is just like light is being emitted. Light reflects off of the object and it's just being emitted in that direction. That's an uninteresting ray. And the reason that's an uninteresting ray is because it goes nowhere near the lens and it just goes off to infinity in its own direction. And so that's a, not an interesting ray. Well, there are three interesting rays that you can draw here, OK, that I'm going to show you where the image gets uh, created. One of them, like just imagine rays heading in every possible direction. So there's an infinity of rays heading off in every possible angle. One of those rays is going to be the lucky ray, which heads parallel to the axis here, parallel to the optical bench. So it's going to go in like this, OK? So there you go. There's one ray. OK, now that ray came into the lens parallel. And the rule is for a con convex lens is that any rays that come in parallel, where do they go? They get past. They pass through the focal point. They get refracted such that they pass through the focal point. And let me see if I can draw this. Not too bad. OK, so there you go. There's one ray that gets uh, refracted. All right. And um, what's another ray? OK, well, another ray is now this is kind of weird. Rays can go both ways. In other words, I could turn the arrow around here. OK, and so this ray comes in parallel and then passes through the focal point. Conversely, a ray that passes through the focal point will go out parallel. All right. And the reason is, is that the refraction doesn't care which direction the ray is uh, is traveling in. I mentioned that in, in class when we actually looked at refraction. You probably forgot about that, but that's OK. So with refraction, you know that you have the bending at the interface, but the bending is exactly the same whether it's going, say, from air to glass or it's going from glass to air. So it doesn't matter whether you have, you know, the ray coming in parallel and then passing through the focal point or passing through the fo focal point first and then going out parallel. OK, so there's another ray here, like out of the infinities of ray here, there's another lucky ray. That lucky ray passes through this through this focal point here like that. So it goes like this, like that, like that, and it gets to the, the lens like that. So it's traveling like this. 
Okay. And so that ray, by this the reversibility of rays, has to go out parallel. Okay. So if a ray goes in parallel, then it passes through the focal point. If it passes through the focal point, then it has to go out parallel to the axis like this. And da da, there's our first ray diagram. Okay, there's a third ray. I'm going to draw it last because I'm probably going to make a mess of this diagram if I try to draw it right now. But you only need those two rays, and it's going to show you exactly where the image is being formed. Okay, notice that these two rays converge right at this point here. Okay, well, guess what? I drew only two rays, but if you did this properly, like in, in you, you applied all the rules of refraction at this lens. Every single ray, no matter where it goes, will actually be refracted by the lens and will pass through that point there. So you get an image. That's where the image is formed. And let me draw the image in blue. Here it is. Here's the image. Okay. Now remember, that was off of the tip of the arrow. So guess what? That's the tip of the arrow there like that. Okay. And so the image that you get is actually um, uh, inverted. And it's at a certain distance from the uh, uh, from the lens. Okay, so just to connect up with the formula, this distance from here. Let me see if I can draw it. Uh, uh, let me draw it in a different color. Let's do green here. Okay, this distance in here. That distance we will call d o because it's the distance from the object to the lens. This distance over here. We will call d i because it's the distance from the um, lens to the object or sorry to the image okay let's call the height of this guy here the height of the object we'll call it ho all right and we'll call the height of the image here we'll call it hi like that and you can see that there's a there's triangles there you see there's one triangle right there okay i don't know if i if I'm pointing, can you see my cursor? Yeah, I, I guess you can see my cursor. There's a triangle there, and then there's another triangle there. So, so you know, you basically these are all the formulas that I'm going to give you come out of the similar triangle. So uh, I'm not going to um, actually uh, drive the formulas. I'll do that when I give you the proper lecture. But the formulas are the one that you just saw, 1 over F. Oh, and I guess I didn't draw F in the diagram, but F is this distance right in here. Oh, different, different green. Okay, there you go. There's F. All right. So F is the distance from the lens to the, to the focal point. And it's the same distance on both sides. So so both focal points are a distance F away. That's going to equal 1 over DO plus 1 over DI. Okay. And there's one formula that we're going to verify. Okay. And the other one is... Uh, you know, like I said, there are similar triangles here. So there's a triangle right in here, and then there's a triangle right in there, and they're similar triangles. And that gives you this other formula. M is equal to minus HI over HO. And that makes sense. It basically says, how much bigger is your image than your object? Okay. And the height of the image yeah, I think you could see in my diagram here that the image is a little bit bigger than the object. Okay, so this would have a magnification. Okay, so uh, HI is a little bit bigger than uh, than HO. All right, and uh, you'll notice that that's slightly different than the formula that Dr. D gave you, but because of similar triangles, this is actually also equal to DI over DO. Okay, and so the distance here and the height there. They're not equal, but they're in the same ratio as the distance here and the height over there. OK, and so we're going to be verifying that uh, that one as well. And uh, there was a professor who actually did this experiment and luckily put all the numbers on the board. Uh, and so you'll be able to use those numbers as part of the results. Let me see if there's any questions in the chat. Uh, Whoa, who's this Dr. Pepper? Put the user in timeout. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, we might have uh, someone that uh, just jumped into the chat here. So uh, I don't know. I'm not seeing any. I'm not seeing any questions here. So let me um, uh, let me uh, continue with um, my this 
um, analysis here, okay? Now, the last thing I'm going to show you here before I try to draw that extra ray is this image here is known as a real image. And um, you'll see a virtual image in the next one. And the reason it's a real image is you see these red rays. In order to form the image, they actually have to cross. So you see that, that red ray there is crossing with that one. They're actually converging where the image is. Okay, You can't just put your eye there and see the image. In order to get that image, you're going to need a screen. And so right here, and I'm trying to draw it in perspective, you actually have to put a screen right there. And if you don't put the screen there, you won't see the image. The, the, the image will actually be projected onto the screen. This is kind of like at a movie theater. You know how the image is actually projected onto the screen of the movie theater. It's the exact same thing. And by the way, it's also like the human eye. Okay, so the human eye, I think you know, is made up of the retina. So the screen here is the retina. Of course, here's the lens in the front of the eye, and here's some image out there in the world. Okay, and what happens is, is the human eye will see the image. It'll actually get projected upside down on the retina, but our brain, you know, rearranges it and, and uh, so on. Okay, so this is what's known as a real image. Okay, and real because the rays have to converge. Okay, I'm going to try to draw that last ray and uh, uh, I'm probably going to make a mess of it, but there's actually a third ray that you could draw here to find out where um, where that um, uh, image is formed. And the, another rule for lenses, and this is true of both convex and concave lenses, if the ray passes right through the middle of the lens, it doesn't get refracted at all. Okay, and that's again just because of the shape of the, the lens. All right, so if you start here and you pass right through there, you should travel through there like that. And I didn't do too bad a job. OK, so you can see that's a third ray, but you don't really need it. You only need two rays because two rays will converge over there. OK, there you go. There's the situation with a convex lens. So this is convex. All right. And with the object further away from the focal point, then uh, uh, for, yeah, further from the focal point, uh, further away from the from the lens than the focal point. OK, so um, let's look at another situation. All right. Create another whiteboard here and uh, still the same con convex lens like this. And now I'm going to put the focal point out here. All right. So I'm just kind of zooming in a little bit and I'm going to put the object right here. OK. So there you go. There's the object. All right. And uh, this is going to give you a very different image. OK. So let's draw the rays again. We're going to start from the tip of the arrow here like this and we're going to look at all the possible rays that are being emitted from this uh, from that uh, uh, point there. OK. But two of them are very interesting. One of them travels in parallel like that parallel to the axis of the lens and then it passes out like that and i'm sorry i missed the focal point but close enough okay so it, it goes out like that and then you say well how do i draw the other one because the other one i drew it passing through the focal point like this but if you draw a, a lens um, a ray like that it just goes out to infinity and it never really hits the lens but you know what you can always turn rays around on themselves. So imagine instead of this ray going out, this ray is coming in like that, passes through the tip there and gets to the surface of the lens there like that. And it refracts. And if it comes in such that it passed through the focal point, then it goes out parallel. OK, and you can, if you like, draw that third ray. Let me see if I can do it without making a mess. Not too bad. OK, I bent it a little bit there, but uh, good enough. OK, now what do you notice about these rays here? You'll notice that unlike the previous here, let me switch to the previous slide for a second. Here they were converging after the rays pass through the lens, they converged onto the screen here after they pass through the lens, they're diverging. And so you could put a screen out here anywhere you like and at no point will you ever get a focused image. OK, so over here, you know, like one of the things you would have done in the lab is you would have had the screen. And actually, you'll see that in the video where this one professor uh, does it. He takes the screen and he knows where the fo where it's going to focus. And you can see the image very sharp there. And then you move the screen back and forth like that and it goes out of focus. OK, and so only at this 
distance di does it actually focus over here you could put a screen there and all you're going to do is get a blur no matter where you put it and you go well well what kind of an image is this then it's not going to form an image in fact it does okay the image that it's for that it, this one forms is actually called a virtual image as opposed to a real image all right let me see if there's any questions in the chat nope all right so to show you the virtual image let me switch to a different color here and uh, imagine that you've got your eye out here. So this is this is supposed to be a human eye, okay? And what are you doing? You're looking through the lens. You're looking through the lens. And what you wind up seeing is you see this ray here, but you think, your eye thinks that this ray is coming. Oh, I gotta make these lines a little longer here like that, okay? Your eye thinks that these rays are coming straight from behind the lens like that. In other words, you know, it doesn't know that the, the ray got bent, okay? So it thinks that the that is coming from this where this blue line was. All right. Okay, and then there's this other ray here, okay? And your eye thinks that it's coming from back here like this. And I'm not doing a too good a job. This should have gone. Well, hold on here. All right. There we go. That's a little bit better. And it thinks that this one is coming from back here like this. Oh, that's really bad. Nah, I didn't do too good a job, guys. But uh, I hope you I hope you can see what I'm doing. If you do this with a ruler, it works out a lot better. Okay, so your eye thinks that this one is coming from back here like that. It thinks that this one is coming from back there like that. And it thinks that one's coming from back there like that. Notice that they all seem to be diverging from this point right here. And so your eye thinks that the image, so this is the object here like that. We'll put a little O there for object. It thinks that the image is back here like this. All right. There you go. Now, this is what's known as a virtual image. All the other formulas still apply, but this is a virtual image. And uh, it's upright. Okay, notice that the arrow is uh, pointing up here like this. So this arrow is pointing pointing up like that, just like the object. So it wasn't inverted by the uh, by the lens, it's upright. It's bigger than the object, so it's been magnified, okay? And it is not formed by the rays coming together onto a screen, rather it is formed because it seems that all these red rays here, which are the real rays, they all seem to be diverging from that image, okay? And you know what this is? This is a magnifying glass. That's exactly what how a magnifying glass works. So if you have a, you might even have a magnifying glass at home. And if you do, I, I recommend you grab it. And then, you know, you just put it up to an object and you'll see that, you know, uh, as you pull the lens further away from the, um, the image, sorry, from the object, the image gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Eventually, if you keep pulling it further and further away, further than the focal point, it doesn't magnify anymore. It just becomes a big blur. OK, and so um, that's because you'll only get the virtual image with the convex lens when the when the object is closer to the lens than the focal point out here. OK, so this is a second scenario that you're going to look at. All right. Let me see if there's any questions in the chat. OK, you guys seem to be doing good. All right, let me give you the third and last scenario. This one we don't have to fully analyze. Uh, what we just finished studying was the convex lens, and we studied the convex lens where the object was closer than the focal point, that's this case, and further than the focal point, the, the, the previous case. The last one we'll look at is the lens, uh, sorry, the concave lens, okay? And so here's our um, optical bench. And the symbol for concave lens is like this. All right. And remember, concave lens, the, it's thinner in the middle than it is at the endpoints. And uh, here's a focal point. And here's a focal point. OK. And the way the concave lens works is, is very different. Let's put the, uh, an object here. It does not matter whether the object is closer or further than the focal point, you will never get a real image with a concave lens. The image is always virtual with a concave lens, okay? And actually, you know what? Let me make that a little bit bigger, like this, okay? Because this is actually a demagnifying uh, lens. Now, let's, uh, let's trace the rays here. So here we are at the tip, 
and there's all that infinity of, of rays going off in every direction. So let's just trace some of the lucky ones. Here's one ray, the one that comes in parallel like this. And you might be tempted to say, oh, it'll bend through the focal point like that. No, that's what a convex lens does. For the concave, what it does is it actually bends away from this focal point. And so to figure out which way this ray goes, you got to kind of create this little construction line like this. Okay, to there. So here's the focal point right there. And I create this little construction line to where it the parallel ray meets there. And that ray will just diverge off like that. Okay, so it comes in parallel and diverges away from this focal point here. Okay, and then the last, uh, you can draw two other rays, but the last ray we need here to find it, it's it just easier to draw the ray that goes straight through the, uh, the middle of the lens. And remember the ray that goes through the middle of the lens here, it does not refract at all. Okay, because of, just because of the geometry of, um, of thin lenses. All right, and so this ray will pass like that. And when will these two rays ever meet? Never. They just, they diverge forever, okay? And it wouldn't have mattered if I put the object closer or further than the focal point. I mean, no matter where you put the object, uh, it's going to diverge. Um, the rays are going to diverge once they pass through the lens. And so here's the hum your human eye. You know, it's over here. You put your eye here like that. And you look through the lens. And what do you see? This ray appears to be coming from here. And this ray appears to be coming from here. And so your image will actually be right there. Whoops, I went a little bit too far. Let me fix that. There we go. Okay. So that's kind of small like that. So here's the object and here's the image. Okay. And uh, uh, this is exactly what um, uh, uh, concave lenses do. They demagnify. They make everything smaller. Okay. Now, typically you don't need demagnifying lenses to look at things uh, in the world, but they're good for, uh, for glasses. Now, I, I mean, you might be nearsighted or farsighted, uh, but if you're like me, uh, I'm nearsighted. So my glasses, I actually have to have uh, demagnifying, that is concave lenses in front of my eyes to correct for that. And if you take a concave lens and you put it up on, on an object, on an object, uh, it doesn't matter how far the lens is from the object, you'll see that it makes the object smaller. Okay. And so there's the story with a concave lens. All right. And the image is always virtual, always virtual. You, you can't create a, a real image with a All right, so there's the theory, okay? Uh, let me see if there's any questions in the chat. So it seems that everyone uh, understands the theory uh, pretty good. So what are you gonna do in uh, this lab? Okay, so let me switch over to um, the lab report here like that. Now the lab report does go through um, some other things, uh, you know, and one of the other things which is kind of interesting is um, color. OK, uh, but it's it's so trivial. I mean, I, I you could just read it and uh, but you don't have to do a report on it. But um, what you were going to do uh, uh, was actually look at um, um, these lenses. OK, using this optical table here like that. And actually, I think this one right here, the one that says new, that's actually the one that um, this professor is using. who seems to be using the exact same equipment that we have. OK, and you'll be looking at both um, uh, a concave and a convex lens like that. And you place them in the into this uh, um, optical bench and you're actually able to measure. I don't I don't know if you could see a ruler here on the side. Yeah, you see how there's a that yellow strip there. There's a ruler. And so you're actually able to measure you know, how far, where, I, where the position is of all the, uh, of all the objects. Okay. So, um, you would then use this to verify the lens formula. That is this formula up here. And the magnification formula for, uh, all three situations. All right. Well, we can't do all three because the, that professor only did it for the convex lens, but the convex lens is, is much more interesting. Okay, so let me um, switch over to, um, you know, on the, our summary of the lab down here. So let me see, can you see that? Yeah, good. Okay, so if you just scroll down to uh, the bottom of our Moodle page, uh, there you can see a uh, summary of the lab. Uh, there's another video 
just which is just purely theory on ray tracing. Uh, you can watch it and it's a complete repeat of uh, what I just did. OK, uh, I might put these images online or I might not. Um, I, they're not the best images. I mean, I'd like to draw something a little bit better. But, you know, he does the same sort of thing, but his images are a little bit better than mine. And he also does the mirrors. OK, so you could just watch that to see the same theory again. Uh, here's the um, the next one down here is the um, uh, uh, both experimental and you can discuss it in both the experimental and results section. This is where that professor takes the uh, uh, concave lens and he actually proves the uh, the lens equation and the magnification equation. Okay, he's got some numbers and he does that. And what I'd like you to, to do in your report, well, let's look at the summary here because I, I actually discussed that in the summary. Okay, so um, um, let, let's just go through what, uh, what, what I expect you to uh, write up. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to look at, um, or you going to discuss what the um, different type of images that are formed by the convex lens okay and depending on whether you put the uh, the image closer to the to the lens than the focal point or further from the lens than the focal point and and I want you to be able to uh, I want you to discuss what characterizes the image that is whether the image is real or virtual or upright or inverted okay and then another purpose of the lab is to verify the um, uh, the lens equation for the convex lens and also just qualitatively describe what happens for the concave lens. There's another video which will actually show you what happens with the concave lens. There are no numbers but it's good enough. It just shows you what happens with the, the concave lens. With um, uh, that one video, uh, I guess uh, it's Dr. Edwards, uh, what I'd like you to do is uh, just watch the video and in the experimental section describe how an optical bench works and how you're going to use that to prove the uh, the lens equation okay so uh, you know the experimental one of the things that you're supposed to do in your experimental section is discuss how it is that you do the experiment that is what apparatus you use and so on there's really not much to it it's not at all deep but you know just describe you know how the optical bench works and then in the results section you know watch uh, Dr. Edwards video again and uh, he does measurements of DO, DI, HO and HI and his lens uh, he only uses one lens with a focal length of uh, 10 centimeters repeat the um, calculations that he does uh, or just a sample of the calculations that he does for your lab report and explain what's going on there okay um, you know he does a pretty good job but you know repeating it I know that's kind of like not as good as doing it yourself but at least you get to see how you crunch through the equations and uh, verify it and then for the concave lens uh, I've got that last video just watch it and you'll see how the concave lens he's got two concave lenses and you'll see he's got um, something which produces some parallel beams and you'll see how the the rays are actually uh, diverged by the by the lens and then finally uh, for the discussion uh, you know just say, well, did it? Did you prove the uh, lens equation? Did you prove the lens equation of for every possibility? And uh, what might you have done that to, to do a better um, uh, a better lab than what uh, uh, Dr. Edwards did? I'll give you just a very simple idea. You know, like uh, Dr. Edwards' video is very good, but uh, does it work for different focal lengths? Okay, he only tried one one uh, uh, one. Uh, uh, lens and so you might wonder does it work for other lenses and stuff like that so so um, you know those kinds of th considerations usually go into a discussion to say well yeah did we did we verify the lens equation well we did but only in this restricted uh, situation at no point did you ever uh, verify the um, um, uh, the lens equation for the concave lens okay so that's the lab report it's kind of short and and uh, it's it's one of my favorite labs actually uh, because it just works out so nice and it's nice to see these things uh, uh, in you know in reality but you know, in, in lieu of that we've got those uh, we've got those YouTube videos okay so uh, that's it for um, for this lab report uh, if you have any questions um, I'll wait just a few minutes put them up in the chat otherwise if uh, if you're good just say you're good and then uh, uh, you can leave okay I'll, I'll and uh, this video should show up online so that you can watch it later if you want to Everyone okay? All right. Yeah. Good. It sounds like people are, are all set.
Okay, guys. Uh, we'll see you. Bye-bye. End of the